uh, also our uh, next uh, uh, speaker, uh, His, Her, His Excellency Jen Hogmartens, Ambassador of Belgium to China. So, so we'd like to have your uh, share ideas on, on our forum, please. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wang, for having me here this morning on this uh, distinguished panel. I also uh, would like to thank previous uh, speakers for their very interesting uh, contributions. Before maybe delving into some of the wider policy areas, uh, let me maybe begin um, by talking a little bit about the local context in, in Belgium. The Belgium uh, economy, uh, of course, is no exception. Also, in our case, the services uh, economy has grown uh, tremendously and uh, nowadays 78% uh, of the active population in Belgium is actually employed in the service uh, economy. And when we look actually at the uh, figures for Brussels, the uh, Belgian and, and European capital, these uh, figures are even more impressive. Uh, over 90% of the GDP of Brussels uh, economy is actually uh, based on the service uh, economy. Now, the reason in Brussels, uh, Brussels of course uh, enjoys a very particular role is also uh, presented here at Siftis uh, Witteboeth and uh, its role is of course in uh, especially providing uh, legal accounting and also financial services to uh, some of the most uh, heavily regulated uh, uh, services sectors and industry sectors. Uh, the reason is, of course, that uh, many of these uh, uh, sectors, such as, of course, the healthcare sector, uh, pharmaceutical sector, the biomedical, the biotechnology, uh, also, of course, uh, the whole food and beverage uh, industry, um, and uh, nowadays also more and more, of course, the tech industry, is because all these uh, industries are regulated at the European level. And that, of course, uh, uh, gives uh, uh, actually Brussels uh, a very uh, particular niche in, in this field. Now, um, the regulatory environment, of course, also helps to push uh, Brussels uh, and, and Belgium's, Belgium's role as um, an arbitration center uh, for uh, trade uh, uh, arbitration. And um, maybe it's interesting also to note that uh, already uh, about 10% of the lawyers qualified or registered at the Brussels Bar also have legal and professional qualifications in many other um, uh, jurisdictions around the world. So I should uh, maybe in this sense also uh, commend the work of the Belgium uh, Arbitration and Mediation Centre, uh, Sepani, in this regard. Now, apart from this role of, of Brussels, um, I should also, of course, uh, mention here our uh, geographical position in, in Europe. Um, in this sense, of course, uh, Belgium is very well known as a logistics and also distribution center in the European Union, uh, where we combine, of course, very good uh, maritime links uh, with uh, inland waterways, a very dense uh, uh, rail and also road uh, network. And of course, I also should mention here, of course, uh, air cargo, especially since the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. It is, of course, uh, in this field of uh, e-commerce that uh, we are also challenged. It is very different when you actually have to provide services to uh, containerized uh, traffic than, of course, when you have to uh, see millions and millions of individual parcels uh, going through and passing uh, your border. And here, of course, uh, I'm very proud also in the way how actually uh, customs uh, in Belgium have uh, facilitated uh, this, this process. And we have, by the way, excellent and excellent bilateral relationship in this regard with uh, the Chinese uh, colleagues. Um, 
of course, uh, coming to some of the wider policy areas that have been addressed, I would like actually to focus on, on four of them. Uh, the first, of course, is the wider competition policy. Very important. I mean, the services sectors, of course, are not immune also to a concentration of uh, market power. And so we, of course, have to remain vigilant for a level a playing field uh, where, of course, uh, the rules of free market competition are um, respected and the same for everyone. Um, and transparency, of course, has already been called out as an important uh, principle in this regard. Uh, we uh, also have to be vigilant for all our uh, small and medium-sized companies, who often also bring very innovative ideas uh, even to uh, these uh, services sectors, which also brings me then to trade-generated connectivity in this regard. Why? Um, because we see, of course, that uh, many very costly physical infrastructures are being built around the world, and um, some of them actually risk of becoming stranded assets. And that would be really a misfortune for the global economy. I think uh, in that case we would see too much uh, a misallocation of, of resources. We have to make sure that uh, when we invest in these infrastructures that we always take into account that they are economically and commercially uh, viable. That is a very important uh, point at hand. Uh, of course, we have already uh, heard a lot about the digital economy uh, this morning and, and yes, we have to address uh, digital policies, extremely important in this regard. Uh, the promotion of uh, digital ecosystems are, of course, still heavily protected all around the world by, uh, of course, uh, market access restrictions and also because of uh, cyber security. Uh, uh, restrictions and this is definitely something that we have to address at the multilateral level. I think that we need to uh, uh, actually uh, devise some internationally accepted uh, standards and norms in this uh, regard. Uh, a fourth element that I see is, um, is that we should not underestimate either the importance of research and Innovation. We're living, of course, in knowledge-based uh, societies, uh, and this is also true for all the service sectors. Um, and, uh, of course, better access to uh, services and a broader uh, choice of services also will actually bring us productivity gains into the uh, industrial sectors. It will increase productivity, which is good also uh, actually for the exports of goods. And uh, this is, of course, also particularly true for what I said on the digital economy. I heard also um, uh, our colleague uh, from, uh, uh, actually, Michelin uh, uh, talk this morning about uh, greener services. This is also definitely something I would like uh, to support very much. Um, last but not least, and this is also something I heard in, the, in one of the keynote addresses this morning, is indeed that we need to continue to identify bottlenecks. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, the Beijing government is doing this, the Chinese government is doing this, um, identify limitations uh, and restrictions. And in this regard, I would also maybe mention the work that we are doing at the level of the OECD in this regard. Um, and there is, of course, the services trade restriction index, which is an excellent basis, actually, uh, and, and how we can actually remedy whatever we can. Um, maybe I want to, to end, um, Dr. Wang, on, 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 a, on a bilateral note again. I mean, we are uh, also marking the 50th anniversary of uh, our bilateral relations this year. Um, we want to invest in our relationship with China. We decided uh, for this also to build a new embassy in, in, uh, in Beijing, and I think that uh, this is an excellent showcase also to see how we can work together very concretely 
between our two countries in the uh, construction sector, which is of course also an important service sector. So we're working of course with the local contractor and we also have some Belgian uh, sustainable uh, design implementation of this uh, uh, new embassy. And I think it's a, a, a very good occasion also to stress uh, the uh, very good uh, cooperation and relationship we are having at the bilateral level. So I think I'm going to leave it at that and thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador. Uh, the uh, uh, Hog Martins, you gave a very good uh, discussion on bilateral relations and uh, you talk about uh, <clears throat> some suggestions for how we can uh, enhance the, uh, uh, the digital economy but also uh, all the areas that we can collaborate on the international you know, area. But also, I'm glad to hear that <laughs> Belgium is going to have a new, uh, you know, it's constructing a new emb embassy that will look forward to, to your new embassy as well.